Hello and welcome to Fireworks in the Real World. This is episode 7 and this week we're going to look at um, we're going to carry on looking at some of the design tools that we started looking at last week. In particular um, the properties of some simple uh, vector objects. Well in fact a lot of these properties apply to vector, bitmap and symbol items. Um, so we looked at the fill properties, the line work properties and now we're down to this little panel over here and uh, the last one on the right there. So this this panel here is is um, it's all the settings to do with uh, layer effects and filters. So the first thing you can do, so we've got a rectangle, the first one is the opacity of that item and as I say that works on vectors and bitmap and anything you've converted into symbols. The next one is the layer um, effect. Now this is <laughs> never fully understood how these actually work. I'm sure somebody somewhere does, but I find that an advantage. I've never really known what the difference between um, these uh, vivid light and hard light. Apart from what I know, if I try them, sometimes they look great and sometimes they don't. So I, I find it quite useful to actually go through a lot of these and just experiment, and you can get some wonderful effects across layers by using them. I do know, for example, though, however, things like overlay and um, screen are very good for, like, um, if you've got a black logo on a coloured background, they can be very handy for just bleeding out the uh, background colour, so you just got the black. I know that um, I multiply does a similar effect um, and actually kind of combine, multiplies mathematically whatever colours you've got with the background colour, so again, that can black logos on a coloured background you can sort of multiply it and just see just see the black logo so little things like that are quite useful dodging is quite fun and can produce some kind of very vivid lighting effects and luminosity is nice for overlaying um, fonts on on photography that kind of thing so I guess I do know a few of these um, quite well um, XOR is another quite useful one actually that's that's a kind of logic um, a lot comes from a logic gates of keeping things exclusive so if you have a if you have an object which is uh, whatever color you make it and you use an XOR um, color or a layer effect whenever you put it over another object it would always be visible so if it was black it would become white you know, so it's, it's always it's always exclusive so it can always be seen so I think there's actually more filter, uh, more layer effects in Fireworks and Photoshop at the moment. Um, but yeah, they're very, very useful for experimenting with and for creating effects. So well worth having a having a run through and see what creative things you can come up with. Okay, so that's this top area. The lower area. Now this is where we get into the um, the live filters. Very powerful set of presets in here. Um, from going down the menu, well, we can turn them all on and off in one go. Once we've got some in, you can actually add third-party plugins as well. But the basic set looks like that, uh, together with the Photoshop live effects down the bottom, which are the same effects that uh, you might be used to in in Photoshop. But if we look at the uh, the kind of basic fireworks ones first, so we've got adjustments. We can we can adjust the levels. Um, which doesn't have any options, just turn it on and off. We can simple controls for brightness and contrast and we can choose in most of these effects whether we want to preview what's happening or not. We have color fill, that's very useful for directly applying a color change now because that's an X or it's always going to be a different color. Let's just turn that back to normal. So color fill is um, very handy and you can change the percentage of the fill. Now I'm not going to run through every single one. Um, lots of standard stuff in here you're probably used to from other packages. Um, color curves, hue and saturation, I use that a lot. Um, it's good for just sort of tweaking visually because this works on bitmaps and vector um, I use it for live changes on photography just to blend them with um, other objects on the screen very similar to the Photoshop um, filter now what these all being live you can turn them on and off with the little tick boxes here 
and you can change the order of them. So if I, for example, we have a whole set of bevel and embossing tools here. So if I choose a, a, a bevel, it's a particularly nasty one, let's do something a bit more subtle. Um, and then we add a drop shadow. Maybe not quite that far. We'd want the, on this little list which does scroll, we'd want the drop shadow to be applied afterwards. If we, if we click and drag, we can actually make the change so it actually applies a drop shadow and then bevels it, which creates uh, subtly different effects. But depending on the combination of effects you've applied, um, changing the order can have um, you know, implications. So it's, it's worth knowing you can actually drag and reorder them. Now, once you've got your set of effects, there's a couple of things you can do with um, what you've applied to any object. So first thing I can do over here is a list of styles. Now the styles are really handy because they create a basically presets of what you've defined in your filter panel. So if I create a new style and call this drop shadow one maybe. Now I can choose in here as well as naming it I can choose the different properties of all the effects because this isn't just the filters this is also everything you've defined. So if you've got a particular kind of fill particular kind of line work, anything, all of this can be kept. And that's all shown in here. So fill type, fill color, stroke type, stroke color, the effects, and even the font um, sizes and styles. So we can save all those in the preset. So if I now, I've now saved that, if I now click on my other shape, go to my list, I've now got that same effect. Although that looks drastically different. Why does that look drastically different? Let's apply another, draw another rectangle. Apply that to it. There you go. That was probably because I've got a difference there. That's why. Because I had a layer effect on. Um, quite a, a quite a drastic one. It was showing it completely different. So I, I guess that's mathematically calculating the inverse so that sh that the highlight has become a shadow etc okay so these are really 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 useful the styles because another thing I can do if I decide that that is too that shadow is way too far away I would go down to the drop shadow I might move it change it a little bit make it a bit more subtle and then I can redefine that style, which means it'll ripple across and update to everywhere else I've used it. So if I click that, we'll see that the one I defined previously has now been um, it's been reapplied, and that that style drop shadow one has been redefined. Now that can be brilliant because if you've got a style applied all over a multi-page document. And you change your mind, say you, know, you think, oh, actually, I think those shadows and all those bullet points are a little bit too um, heavy. You can do it in one go and change the style that you've applied across the page. Um, so really, really powerful. So the uh, next option along, um, well, let's go to the end. First of all, you can delete that uh, that particular style you've defined. You can also um, unlink the style that you've applied. So if you want that one to be remain kind of exclusively different you can kind of unlink it from the style itself so now that hasn't got that particular style applied to it but it does have these individual effects so if you update that one um, and do something crazy on there and update the style it won't affect I've now redefined that style so it's going to affect everything that's got drop shadow one on it but this one now lives independently so that can be useful and so finally the last button here, the middle button, is called the clear overrides button. And what this does is, um, well basically if you have lots of, um, let's copy and paste that, say lots of these, um, and you wanted to make a couple of individual changes, that's actually, you're, you're overriding the style here. Um, you might turn that one off on there and that one. 
but this button will basically return them all back to their um, original state. Didn't do that. Oh, you have to click on it and then clear override. Oops. Then it'll clear the override. So it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't do all of them in, in one go. It'll do them individually if you've uh, changed and overridden the style. So that's the styles panel. Um, really useful. Um, use it all the time and find it very very easy to to change in effect um, styles. Now the last thing that I haven't shown you is well this Photoshop live effects which um, pretty much what I'm used to in Photoshop so I usually use a combination of some of the, the Photoshop styles and the fireworks files at the same time some of them are they've got a few more options um, the fireworks styles tend to be a little bit simpler um, more cut down in a few places so depending on what I want to achieve I might use the, the Photoshop live effects styles and again that they also get defined so if I redefine the style there you go they get rippled across as well if you've got the same style applied to different objects okay the last little area of this panel is the uh, the boolean operations for vector tools or oh, one thing I should mention is when you save styles um, if you bitmap objects of course they won't have these properties of uh, fill and line work it'll just be this this panel here so if you're dealing with bitmaps not vectors um, you can apply all the same filters you can use styles um, but of course you don't have any access to line work or fill for bitmaps so that's the only, only, only difference between them otherwise you can use some styles in the same way so the boolean operators um, let's clear those crazy effects off and you can delete these by just using the delete I think you can multi-select mm, no you can't no one at a time let's just tip them all off okay so boolean op standard boolean operations on vectors if you select more than one object you have an option to um, union them i.e. join the paths you have the option to just make sure you select them both to kind of uh, subtract one from the other or punch which basically leaves the bit that's sticking out that isn't part of the two that overlap you have an option to uh, intersect which is the opposite so just the bit where they overlap or the last one is to crop so pretty much the same um, it just leaves that little bit again then the last option you have is to combine them so that will actually um, now take away anything or the extraneous bits that you had originally and just leaving you with the bit that you were interested in from the boolean operation so pretty standard um, vector boolean tools there for creating you know, unique objects but very useful to have in here one other last little thing I just wanted to um, show let's turn all these effects back on again not the best um, example shape in the world to be working with but that'll do one of the little thing you can do with your filters when you've applied a bunch of filters to something is um, if you've got the history panel open you can actually select those filters and right click on them oh no it's not right click sorry it's up here it's save as command so you can save your applied filters as a little command that'll appear up in the command menu so I'm going to call that horrid or garish shadow one. Now, if I create another object at any point, this stays across. Um, I think it stays across documents. So if you um, go to commands and you'll see them appearing on the bottom of this list, you've always got access to garish shadow one. Let me just test that new new document. Draw a shape. Yep, so it's always available between documents. Lovely. You always want to have that effect ready at hand, I should imagine. So that's what I'm going to show for this um, this week and more next week. Thank you very much.